You've been asking for it, so here it is my first network rack setup. Now I am no expert in this kind of stuff, but this whole rack serves a lot of very important parts of my life, as well as operating this entire YouTube channel. So I'll go over piece by piece what's on this rack, how I use it, and any upgrades I wanna make in the future. And of course, I'll drop links to everything in the video description in case you wanna check anything out further. Now, if you follow this channel at all, You'll know I really have no idea what I'm doing when it comes to home servers or networking. But it's definitely a hobby of mine, and this rack plays a crucial part in my everyday operations. So I'll give out some suggestions in this video to the best of my knowledge, but you should always do your own research from some actual experts. I'll link a few of my favorites in the description as well. So let's start with the rack itself and why I actually hate it. It's a 15U size network rack from a company called Pile. And while it does have some really strong metal quality, sturdy wheels, and an open top, the problem is that the mounting mechanism is not using the standard rack screws and cage nuts. It's just some random screw size, which isn't the end of the world, but I already have a bunch of cage nuts from a previous rack purchase, so it makes mounting stuff in this kind of annoying. And truthfully, the only real reason I'm using it is because it was given to me free of charge from a friend, and I love them, so I mainlined it. 15U is the perfect size I need for now, but I could see myself upgrading in the future for when we eventually move houses if I need more room. But as for this guy, well, I guess I'll just start at the top and work my way down. At the tippy top, we have a standard 19 inch patch panel, which is totally not necessary, but it does help keep things a little tidier. This is not the type of patch panel where you have to push down each and every one. This one just uses keystones, so I can just plug an ethernet cable directly in on both sides. I had a ton of ethernet cables lying around, so it's not like I was making my own cables or anything. For most people, I really do recommend just using keystones like this. The only reason why you wouldn't is if you're connecting your whole house or business and you're running your own length cables that aren't terminated yet. Then I think it makes more sense to do it the other way. I'm not using the entire patch panel for now, but I've got it just in case I need it. And right below it on the left is a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, and I've got it mounted in this cool, minimal 3D printed case. At the moment, this Pi is running Pi-hole, so it's my personal DNS server and tracking blocker. I don't have this running on my router at the moment, it's mostly just running on my personal PC. And to the right of that is my pride and joy. This is my main network switch the QNAP QSW M21082C. It's a mouthful, I know, but shout out to QNAP for sending it over for me to check out. It's got 10 non-POE ports all loaded with 2.5 gig ethernet. And on the right, we have two 10 gig ports that can be either RJ45 or SFP+. So while it looks like there are four ports here, you can choose one or the other. So it's really only two active ports, but that's fine because this is all I need to power my business. One of these ports goes to my server and the other goes directly to my main editing PC, both of which are equipped with 10 gig network cards. This allows me to move files from my server very quickly, but more importantly, it allows me to video edit it directly from the server. So as soon as I'm done filming, all of my footage goes directly to the server, which has redundant storage. So if anything happens to one of my SSDs, I'll be in the clear and not lose any data, but more on that when we get to it. In the meantime, I've actually had this switch running since June of 2024, so huge shout out to QNAP for helping me out with my productions and not being weird about it. I've had this running 24-7, and I really like the visual interface of the management system. It makes everything super simple to configure, and frankly, it, it just works, so I love it. The only downside is that it isn't rack mountable, so I've got it just sitting on this small shelf, and that works out just fine. Oh, and these patch cables are just some cheap ones I found on Amazon. They were all Cat 6A, I believe, but they are also super thin compared to normal Ethernet cables, you know, just to reduce on clutter a little bit. Below that, we have another patch panel that is identical to the one on top, but as you can see, we are actually using almost all of the ports. They are plugged into another network switch. This is the TLSG1048 from TP Link. It's a 48 port non PoE switch. Nothing fancy here. It's unmanaged and can only handle gigabit speeds on each port. And if you notice, I'm actually only using the first few ports on here. Well, that's because I actually got this on a really good deal and I just decided to pick it up for when I inevitably add a bunch of ethernet drops to my house, whether that's going to be this house or you know wherever we move in the future. This will provide internet to all the drops. So for now, 
It's just overflow from my main switch, but I'm still glad I picked it up. Next up is another shelf that is primarily where I put miscellaneous devices, mini PCs, or storage. On the left is a mini PC from AOC. It's running an N97 CPU, 16 gigs of RAM, and half a terabyte of storage. So just a pretty standard low powered mini PC. And this is what I call my break fix device. Nothing that goes on here is crucial. Nothing that goes on here is mission critical. It's what I use to learn. Currently, I have Proxmox installed on it as I'm trying to put in the work to learn it a bit more before using it officially in my router. Just learning the basics of virtualization, hardware pass through, and anything else I need to know how to use it properly. In the past, I've used it to test out different Linux distros or even just had Windows installed on it so I could use it as a digest server for storage. Nothing on here is important, but it plays a very important part of my home lab. A device that I'm not afraid to break and it's been monumental in helping me learn about different services or operating systems that I really have no idea about. Now before I get to the bottom, let's turn this bad boy around and see what we're working with on the back. On the top we have a PDU, or Power Distribution Unit, which is essentially a fancy power strip that everything is plugged into. And on the front we have these nifty red power switches. And I really like these because not everything actually has a power button, like the network switches or the Raspberry Pi. They just get powered on when you plug them in. So if I ever wanted to turn them off due to a malfunction or a hazard, I have an easy way to turn the power off to that device separately. I wish I had access to this on the front as it would just be easier, but this is what we're working with. And this PDU is plugged into this UPS or uninterruptible power supply. Basically, if my power flickers or if it goes down at all, everything will be battery backed up. Not forever, but it's enough time for me to power everything down the normal and safe way. The one I have isn't super powerful, but it handles all of this at once for about 15 to 20 minutes, and it's been working great so far. Okay, let's go back to the front. Down here is my main home server that we will simply call Kevin. Kevin is in a 4U sized case from Rosewill that is rack mountable, but instead of mounting it directly into the rack, I have it sitting on some universal adjustable rails. That means I can pull this thing in and out if I need to work on anything and not have to have all the pressure of this heavy thing relied on just a few screws. Here is the inside of the machine and I'll go over piece by piece. Up top we have this 750 watt ATX modular power supply that is gold rated, so some good efficiency there. 750 watts is way overkill for this server. I'm mostly using it because I had it left over from a previous project. And it's powering this MSI Z690 motherboard. So why this board? Well, it has eight native SATA ports, so I can plug in a ton of drives, but also has a lot of NVMe slots on the board for access to super fast storage, as well as many PCIe slots and lanes. Well, for a consumer board at least. I can fill these slots up with, you know, more NVMe drives, network cards, a graphics card maybe, just all kinds of expansions that I could use for my server. So this guy worked out well for me, mostly because I didn't want to use a server style motherboard for now. And the CPU powering this is the i5-12400. It's a modern Intel CPU that has a good amount of cores, virtualization, and has access to QuickSync, which is Intel's amazing encoding implement, making transcoding videos on Plex much faster and efficient without the use of a dedicated graphics card. I can get a couple of 4K streams all at once without any issues. It's really amazing what you can get out of a CPU these days. And in terms of RAM, I am using 64 gigs of DDR4 memory. It's not super fast or anything, just cheap sticks from Silicon Power. But I'm going to need all of that RAM for my ZFS pool, which helps me move files quickly and efficiently. And again, it's also just nice to have the extra RAM in the future in case I want to run more virtual machines. Now in terms of storage, I'm running five 8 terabyte drives. All of them are the same WD Blue CMR drives, so they can play nicely with TrueNAS. I've got them running in a RAID Z1 array, meaning if one of my drives ever fails, I can replace it easily without losing any data. But this means I have around 30 terabytes of usable data after overhead, but a little less since ZFS prefers you stay at like 80% capacity, but we'll say 30. And this storage is mostly used for my YouTube channel. Any old footage gets archived on this drive, so if I need to pull some B-roll from an old video, I can easily access it. And while the hard drive transfer speed is pretty good, it's not really going to max out a 10 gig network. That's why I also have two 2 terabyte NVMe SSDs and a mirrored VDEB that I use for my super fast storage. 
So all of my video editing files get put on here or any files that I access a lot and need to be able to use at a moment's notice. So I'll dump new video files onto the SSD, do all of my editing on it, and then once the video is complete, I'll move the entire project from my SSD into my hard drive array for long-term storage. I'm not saying that's the best method to do it, but it's what I've been doing and it's been working out perfectly for me. And this isn't really a software video, so I'm not gonna go too much into it, but I am running TrueNAS scale on the server on bare metal and any Docker containers or virtual machines are being ran directly from TrueNAS and it's been pretty cool to work with so far. I'm still learning the software since I've used mostly Unraid for such a long time, but I mostly switched to TrueNAS because I wanted to learn more about it and that's been a lot of fun. And that pretty much wraps up everything I have in my personal network rack, but this is in no way a final statement on this. As I think everyone knows, this is going to change a lot throughout the year based on my needs or desires. But it's been serving me well, and I'm super happy with where it's at now. In the near future, one upgrade I can imagine is that I'd like to create my own router so I can have more control over my network, as I'm currently just using the one provided by my ISP. And I think that will be a great learning experience and a ton of fun. So let me know in the comments if you'd like to see a video on that. Thanks to the channel members for supporting the channel, and get subscribed for more technology content. My name is Jason, thanks for watching.